Hey everybody, well, if we're going to do this congregational meeting virtually, we might as well make the most of it, right? And because I have a little bit of freedom on what this meeting is going to look like, I thought what a neat thing to maybe take folks around and uh, kind of talk about our year with the perspective of some visual to go with it. And so for our first conversation, I just want to uh, bring us up here. I am upstairs. If you don't know where I am, I think most of you probably do. Maybe you've never been up here. Uh, some of you have, no doubt. Uh, I'm upstairs in the attic of our church. Um, and if you've ever looked to the back of the room in the auditorium, you've seen this big open window, what we might call the crow's nest or whatever. It sits right above the soundboard. That's where our men and women are that help serve on our media team. Uh, right below me here, but this is the crow's nest, and so I'm overlooking our auditorium. Uh, as a side note, I don't know if I say this enough, I am so thankful for um, our facility in general, but even specifically our auditorium. This is what I would say about it. It is beautiful and simple, and that says so much about who FCF is. It, it Let me go in reverse order, simple. We are simple folks, there's no doubt about it. There's nothing about this auditorium that is really fancy or ornate, um, you know, lots of frills, but at the same time, it is beautiful. And there is really something to be said for both, simplicity and beauty all at once. I, this happened just slightly before I got here, the renovation of this room. Uh, I believe it was a bit of a vision of Mike McNamee and a, and a few others maybe that helped. Um, but really turn this into a really beautiful gathering space. And so I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And that's just a, a real, I hope it's okay to say it. I think it is. I think the Lord would say, yeah, absolutely. This is my gift to you. And, and I would say the auditorium is, is without a doubt a beautifully simple space to gather. But let me turn attention, though, really to that gather part, because you can't really go through 2020 and a recap of the year and not address the gathering of Faith Christian Fellowship. Um, beginning on March, well, I think, the, I think the, uh, the orders came down on March 13th, a Friday maybe, and March 15th was the next Sunday that we would have gathered, uh, and we didn't. And so then we went for a series of nine or ten weeks, and we were not in this place. And that was a hard season. Uh, we developed a good online presence, which we're really thankful for. We increased our subscriptions to the YouTube channel. Uh, that was kind of cool to see that, that we could reach uh, our church family and maybe some extended family uh, with our resource of our Sunday morning gatherings. Tony and Sarah uh, increasing their um, receptivity through uh, even doing music from their home, which was necessary. I spoke from my home a few times. We also did some some uh, Sunday morning live streams from the auditorium, but no one was in here. Only a few of us that it was that it was uh, that needed to be here to to provide the live stream. So, um, what what did we talk about this year? We talked about our great God, um, and that didn't change all year long. We uh, we journeyed through Hebrews, talking about Jesus is greater than and. And we were confronted that on a weekly with that on a weekly basis. Um, we we obviously did our communion service. I think about standing up here and looking out over the auditorium and realizing how many communion services, how how much of that happened this year, even even through the tough days. And um, I think about uh, the baptism. We just had a baptism. Uh, we just had a baptism a few weeks ago, right there in our baptistry, and that was. That was great to be brought back into our routines of, of baptism, of communion, um, journeying through Hebrews and then Leviticus. We did some online time in First Peter. Um, and so really when you think about it, as hard as 2020 was, um, there is a ton to be thankful for. And I can't, I can't help but, but look out over this auditorium and realize how God has journeyed with us through these tough, this tough year, the, the days that were difficult. Uh, sometimes we didn't know if we would, keep, we would be able to keep gathering ups and downs as the government was trying to do you know, what it could to help keep us safe maybe. But um, we've, we've seen fewer of you, and, and we're sad for that. But we know that there are reasons why that has happened, and we're patiently waiting to see uh, some of you that we haven't seen a lot of 
over this year, we hope that 2021 allows us to see this auditorium fill back up on Sunday mornings. Um, but it, it was special nonetheless, and I, I don't look on it with any measure of regret. You know, every one of these seats, and not all of them are filled every week, that's not my point, but every one of these seats represents a person in my mind. And um, I share with you a story that um, Beverly's old pastor, Tom Nelson, uh, his staff, which it's a much larger church, but his staff put pictures of individuals and as he was preaching one Sunday, um, as he was preaching and came into an empty auditorium to preach a little bit like we would do here with an empty auditorium, but just talking to a camera. But what they did is they, they taped pictures of various congregation members uh, on the backs of the seats so that he was looking at the people that he loved so much. And that's exactly how I feel uh, in many of the same ways that I look at each one of these chairs in this auditorium and it represents somebody. It's not a chair, but it's a somebody. And, uh, and so that, you can't really begin a 2020 recap without uh, recognizing uh, the significance of this space and what it means to our church. The last thing I would say with this, we always want to give a, a 2021 anticipation. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Right out of the gate, early part of the year, one of the things that we want to do is um, we want to... Uh, really emphasize the theology of the local church. What, what did God intend for the local church to be about and to look like um, when he constructed it uh, through the disciples, through first the Lord Jesus and then his disciples and then their followers and so on down the line? What, what did they want the local church to be about? And so that's one of the things that we look forward to discussing in 2021. Uh, you'll probably still see some some guest speakers to help bring a well-rounded look to our Sunday mornings and freeing me up to maybe still help. I go right through those doors over there sometimes and help with our children's ministry, Amelia Rowland and, and others who are part of that team. So um, we'll see a lot of things stay the same in 2021, but we'll also see some new and fresh things. And I hope that we see some of you that maybe we've missed seeing for a little while. But uh, what a good year. What a good year God has taken us through as hard as it's been. And so thanks for being a part of, of this. Well, since I'm already up here, I might as well shoot another one from another place that maybe only a few of you have ever been. This is the other side of our attic. Um, a lot of things happening up here. If you've never been upstairs, this is sort of our storage space of our attic. Uh, maybe Christy or David wouldn't want me to show you this video, not because it's there, it's, it's any reflection on them, but it's just, it's the reality of a, uh, of kind of a, a work in progress, right? A, a place where we put a lot of our, uh, a lot of our supplies. The reason I came up here, one was to give you another picture of a place that you probably don't come very often. Um, but really it, to me, it's a lot more, it has a lot more to do with our ministries, uh, that are represented in this room. I could go anywhere in the building because so much ministry happens in so many different places around the building, but it's a place maybe you don't get to very often, uh, and a lot of ministry would come out of this, <laughs> this space. Uh, our children's ministry, our youth ministry, some of our events uh, come out of this. And so I really wanted to just talk a few minutes about ministry for 2020. You, I want to encourage you to read the, the documents that we have made available, sort of the ministry summaries from all of our ministry leaders. Um, most of them are represented by staff, but there are a few others that, that have spoken into our ministries for 2020. Um, and as you know, so many of them look different. Um, everything was affected by this year. Um, our student ministry really had to fight through some things. Lewis and his team, uh, changes and constantly moving around. I want you to know that our youth ministry is probably the one that takes the hardest hits when we make changes. Because uh, instead of having two groups of people that, that Lewis is trying to please, leadership of our church that he's trying to please and make sure that he's doing everything that everyone agrees with at leadership level and then maybe like children's ministry at where you have parents who are very concerned about things that are happening with their kids uh, or a missions ministry where Dave is again worried about leadership and what the leadership wants from him and 
but then those who would participate in, in um, mission or global ministry outreach. But Lewis also has a very particular group of kids that are going to tell him what they, what they feel and what they think. And he's got to think about that and, and really encourage his students, the students of our, of our church. So ministry is such a big part of what we are trying to do. And this room kind of represents it. Um, we haven't been able to do as much as we would have hoped. And if you check out that those ministry summaries, you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, each one of our staff team and the ministries they oversee have spoken to it. Uh, Aaron and uh, women's ministry and events. Um, Amelia with our children's ministry and all of the things that took place. You know that we had VBS. Uh, maybe most of you did know that. We did gather for VBS. We probably had 30, and 40, 30 or 40 kids every Wednesday night during the month of July. Um, and that was great. It, we needed it. We so needed something that allowed us to be to feel a little bit normal. And we learned a lot from it. We learned that we probably don't want to do uh, VBS every Wednesday night in a, in a given month. Um, that we like the one week at a time, kind of all condensed in. And there's all sorts of reasons that go into that. But um, that was, you'll learn about that. You'll learn about our student ministry, as I already mentioned. You'll learn from Tony and and what it felt like to lead our, our worship and arts ministries, he and Sarah, and the impact on our music ministry, the impact on our media ministry, our media ministry, especially because of all of the things that had to happen in order to make 2020 survivable for, for all of us. But, um, and then of course, David and, and our, our, our global ministry, so much happened in the area of global ministry. Um, we, we were so limited in what we could do. Uh, physically, all of our trips through the summer, our earlier in the or late spring trips, summer trips, and even some in the fall, we've only been able to do a, a fraction of what we wanted to do throughout the year. The last two months, uh, uh, David has been unable to get to Nicaragua in November, and then again just a few days ago here in December. Uh, they just would not allow him to travel for reasons that we don't know. And so, we hand that over to the Lord and we just say, Lord, apparently you, this was not what you wanted for us right now. But in its place, like with global ministry, like with VBS and our children's ministry, like our events, um, God filled our cup to overflowing. Uh, we watched you all give for global ministry efforts. We watched you give for local ministries like our um taking care of the teachers for breakfast here just a couple of months ago uh, in our local Williamsport area. We were able to provide several breakfasts for the teachers in the schools. Um, we were able to uh, bless the, the first responders earlier in the year during the summer. We were able to do, to do that. We were able to, to provide a Mother's Day and a Father's Day special acknowledgement Sunday, almost like we've never done before. And so I just, I can't believe that I, I can't walk through this year of 2020 and not see the thumbprint, the fingerprint, however you want to call it, the handprint of God all over the things that we have done. Um, it, it, I don't know that I want to repeat it. Believe me, I would love for 2021 to feel a little bit more normal than 2020 did. But I refuse to leave 2020 completely in in the wake, in behind us, without a recognition of all that God taught us. So this is sort of ministry central, right? This is where we come up and we get supplies for Kids Life on Wednesday night, or we get all of our Christmas decorations. So many of you have said that you believe our, our foyer has been better decorated this year than ever before. Uh, well, all of those decorations come from right back there. And uh, a handful of men helped come up with me a couple of weeks ago and bring it all down to the to the main level of the church and then uh our ladies on the staff team and a few others helped decorate it and it it's as beautiful as it ever looked and i completely agree with those of you who have said that um but just be ready to give god thanks for an amazing amazing year uh and not only look at what didn't happen but look at what did happen uh because a lot really did and so welcome to our attic, welcome to Ministry Central, and uh, I'll talk to you in just a little bit. Well, hey, I wasn't necessarily planning on doing this particular location because I've already 
come to you from the auditorium, but I'm in a different position in the auditorium. You, what you can see is, this is always hard, right there. There's the crow's nest. There's where I was just a few minutes ago um, in our video. And I wasn't necessarily going to come back to the auditorium, but I realized I, I really left out one ministry. I talked about ministries, or I do in this video. I give you some updates on our ministries. But one ministry that I left out um, or I didn't give specific attention to was that of our Young at Heart. Uh, most of you may know this, but uh, our Young at Heart right now is gathering in the auditorium uh, on a Wednesday morning, on Wednesday mornings. Um, they are, our, if, if we think virus, they are our most vulnerable, our oldest, uh, the oldest members among us, our our family that we love so much that are in their senior years of life. And, and so uh, back in basically the summer when we started gathering in person again, uh, we moved to the auditorium uh, to provide that, that spacing. And we have had a good turnout of our originals. We've missed some. And probably understandably, we've missed some of them more than we've missed almost anybody because of that very fact of, of the vulnerable population that they are. But, uh, but we've seen a lot come back. And so this auditorium has provided space for our young at heart. But I also want to tell you something else that they did. Early in the shutdown, and then as it's carried forward once we started gathering again, some of our most frequent users of our, our online presence has been our senior adults. And I have parents that uh, are not necessarily real technically savvy. Um, and, and some of our senior adults certainly have their challenges <laughs> with, with technology, but they are our most frequent and most um, effective users of our Zoom, our, our YouTube, our live stream, because they've had to be. They've had to use it so as to stay safe and to stay, uh, when necessary, away from danger. Um, and so I'm so excited that I am part of a church that has a strong and loving senior adult community, our young at heart, because uh, it just reminds me of God's goodness. Um, they love me as a younger man in the faith, but as the pastor of the church, they love me. And I just have to thank them for how much they love me. And I know that. And, but our young at heart is a sweet, sweet ministry within the church. They are currently gathering in this room. Uh, we set up a little TV. We set up the TV monitor in the front of the room so that we can kind of interact with those who are on Zoom. So, so our Young at Heart does a blend, and I think a lot of you guys know that. They do a blend of in-person and Zoom, uh, and they have been phenomenal at it. I will say that without Tony's help, it probably wouldn't have gone as smoothly as it has, but, um, but it has been really a lot of fun. And and I just want to let you guys know how that. So, so again, we're in the auditorium, but instead of just Sunday mornings, this auditorium has also served our young at heart in a fresh new way. And I hope you can appreciate that as part of this church. Well, I am in our gathering space, what we call the gathering room, uh, just off of the stage. Uh, this is room eight in our education room, in our education wing. Uh, right there is the stage. Uh, right there is room seven, where a lot the divided room where a lot of ministry happens. But early in the year, it was one of the funniest things that happened was the board, uh, from a very generous gift, a financial gift from someone late last year in 2019, someone gave us a very generous financial gift. And in a number of ways, we use that. Ministry was, was one of the ways that we really applied that, and we were very thankful but another way that we used it in an internal ministry was to renovate uh, room eight. It was a much more, it had kind of turned into a bit of a storage room. Um, and, and, and that's always very valuable space for storage in a church like this. But, but we really wanted a space that was a little bit more warm, uh, a little bit more secluded, so that if we wanted to do some things, uh, with folks, maybe greet new people or uh, prayer, and I'll get to that in just a second, just a, a Bible study room, some of our ladies that might gather for Bible study, and, and just a little bit more warm, just a warmer, a warmer space. And so early this year, we, we commissioned uh, Christy Hickson, our office administrator, but also a real eye for decor. We asked her to just kind of come in and, 
and put a vision to it. And so this is what resulted in it. And we're calling it the gathering room. Well, um, you've seen this. I've come to you with videos before out of our gathering room, this room right here. But I wanted to take a moment and talk about it. One one reason is that it that it it was done literally days before the shutdown in mid-March. Uh, and so gathering room really took on a funny uh, connotation because it was going to be very limited in what we could do as far as our gathering. I've met with people in this room in one-on-one -on -one conversations, but but early in the year, we had such high hopes for it and we didn't know what would happen once the shutdown. Well, it's be, it's it's becoming useful to us again, and we're so thankful for that. And that's one of the things I want to mention. Every Tuesday night is a small group of people gather here as well as online. We do them both again. I, I talked to you about Young at Heart being a, a dual uh, gathering where it's in person and online for some of our Young at Heart when they meet on Wednesday mornings. Well, Tuesday nights is our corporate prayer night, our church-wide, and any of you are welcome to come. And this is usually where we meet. Uh, the, we, can, we can get the number of people that we need to in this room, uh, still with spacing and masks, and we try and do things as safely as we can, but we gather in here and then we set our TV up. It's right behind the camera. We set our TV up and we, and we turn and face, face it forward so that we can see those who are joining us online and they can see us in this room. And it is, it's one of my highlights of the week, Tuesday nights, um, is praying with our faithfuls who are lifting up the needs of this church, of our community, and of the country, and, and beyond, our globe. And, and, and so just wanted you to see it and wanted you to know, and, and one of those ministries that's really important to us is our prayer ministry. I don't actually think it's in your document. That would have been on me to sort of uh, speak of that, but but I can do it here. And uh, so if any of you are looking for a place to land on a Tuesday night from 7 to 8 o'clock is when we gather. We don't have child care. We don't have anything built around it. But it is a unique hour, a sweet hour, as the hymn says, a sweet hour of prayer. So this is our gathering room. It's a really uh, great ministry room for us. Um, and it's always available if you just uh, check in with our front office to use it as a gathering space if you ever needed something like that. Uh, but specifically what happens in here on a consistent basis is our Tuesday night prayers. And so all of you are welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. Well, I'm out in our foyer, and most of you would recognize this. Some of you have taken pictures here. Uh, we talked about this already, how the foyer this year, our Christmas uh, together decorations were maybe the best that we've had in years past. I mean, just really a beautiful space. Uh, and again, much thanks to those who participated. I got to give a shout out to Christy. I don't know if this was intentional or not, um, but I just noticed it probably was with her or maybe this is just me. I don't know. But I love how the sconce there, the bright light of the sconce is just above the nativity scene. That was so clever. I never even realized that until I brought the table over here and brought the camera and the you know, that I'm shooting this video that I even noticed. I was like, that's brilliant. So anyway, that's just me. Maybe maybe, I, maybe that is just me, but uh, that might've been intentional if I know Christy. So uh, anyway, um, I just want really quickly, this is a short clip. I just want to remind you, uh, and there's no reason why this backdrop means anything to this video, but uh, I just want to remind you that uh, our uh, board members, two of our five laymen, we have a, a board of seven men, two are pastors, myself and David Glaze, uh, and then we have five laymen that are serving currently, uh, and two of those five are up for re-election. Uh, at, at Faith Christian Fellowship, as of right now, we have a board that exists of uh, pastors and laymen, uh, and they the laymen serve for... Uh, potentially six years, but it's broken up into two three-year terms, and they must be re-elected. If they're elected for the first three-year term, they must then also, if they choose, be re-elected once again for a second three-year term. Well, that is the case for Jeff Rowland and for Brian Detzel. And so I just want to remind you, if you're watching this video, that this coming Sunday, we really need for that uh, those ballots. We're asking you to have those ballots in no later than this Sunday. They can come in before then. You can even email our front office, Christy and our front office, to let her know if you'd simply like to cast your votes 
uh, through her, she can serve as a proxy vote for you and she will make sure those votes get counted. Uh, but if you are voting with the ballots, we've provided you those ballots, we would ask that you would have those in. We are gonna collect them and count those ballots on Sunday, December 20th, this next Sunday. So please make sure that you have those in. Uh, I would put in a request that everyone would affirm uh, Brian and Jeff both. Uh, these two men, as long, uh, uh, along with the other three, Sam Proto, Matt Wilson, and Brian Orndorff, but Brian Detzel and Jeff Rowland on this occasion have been a tremendous encouragement to me. Our board has enjoyed a few years of growing and growing and growing unity, uh, and I am so thankful for that. So I would make a gentle request that you would affirm these men. They are godly men. They have shown themselves faithful to the tasks that we've asked of them, and they have led well. And so it's just my, my request. If there is a reason otherwise, then, you, then it is your freedom to vote how you choose. But uh, that's my personal pitch. So this Sunday at, uh, on December 20th is our final day to collect ballots for uh, Jeff Rowland and Brian Detzel for their reelection to our FCF board. Thanks. Well, for my last video clip, everybody, I thought I was done with the attic, but I actually thought, you know, it'd be great to take people up to one more place in our upstairs attic. Uh, I'm on, I'm in the, in the first part, if you come up the steps, um, and you were above the men's room, basically the men's restroom that we are coming in here. And so I thought it would be good to come this way. Uh, I'll lead you through, uh, this, we come into here, and this is actually Pastor Dave's office. Uh, some of you have been in here before, but that's Pastor Dave's office. But on the other side of the hallway from Pastor David's office is this little teeny tiny room uh, right here. It is, it is smaller than maybe your auxiliary bathroom, okay? Or maybe, I don't know. It's small, okay? But a lot happens here, and it goes to the video that I'm shooting for us right now, this little video clip. Uh, we, this room is where two men, faithful guys, honorable guys, I'm going to actually do this right here and come and sit down and talk to you. In this teeny tiny room is where um, the giving on a weekly basis is counted and recorded, and then ultimately will be uh, deposited into our church's account where then we can spend for ministry purposes. Uh, the men gather up your giving on a weekly basis. They come up here and two of them together for the integrity and the accountability of it. They come up and they, um, they record, they count and record all of the gifts that are given through each given each particular week. Um, and so I thought it'd be fun to just take the last few minutes and talk about another important aspect of what we do at a congregational meeting, and that is present to you the budget. Um, our budget this year was a, a work in progress in part because of what happened with 2020. Um, praise to the Lord that we um, were financially solid and even um, enjoyed a surplus through the year. Now, we enjoyed that surplus sort of unfortunately because we were so limited in what we could do. But what's amazing is that even as we were limited in what we could do and what we could spend those resources on because of such little ministry at certain times during the year that could even happen, um, the result of that was you all just kept giving. Um, and we were astounded by that, and it just grew our resources to do some things that we almost weren't prepared for. Or, well, we were prepared but could only imagine what God would do to provide for us. Um, and so I'll talk about that in just a minute. But um, we obviously, we uh, owe to our church uh, as open-handedly as we can a, an explanation of our budget this year. Uh, I'm going to try and put up on screen with this, so you'll hear my voice maybe but not always see me, is to include uh, some visuals for you in this regard. So we're going to show you a little bit about what our, our budget looks like. Uh, last year, our budget was $598,102. That's what we started January 1 in um, with a goal of reaching as giving and expenses. We obviously always want to match our giving with our expenses. Sometimes one is above the other, and, and we pray not by much. Certainly that our spending is not too much ahead of our giving, but 
uh, that happens back and forth. Sometimes we see at different times during the year surplus. Sometimes we see a little deficit, but it always works out. We've got a good um, safety net in our account that that we can that that we're never in financial um, uh, that we don't have any financial issues in paying our bills. That's always uh, taken care of. But as far as our giving over our expenses, sometimes it goes either way. We want it to be as close as we can. As I've already mentioned, 2020, our expenses always were falling below our, our giving, the, the income that you all were providing through your gifts and, and offerings. And so uh, that was always a surplus all year long. Uh, but last year, starting at January 1st, or, or, or the beginning of this year, January 1st, our, our budget was 598-102. Um, we are asking the church to increase that budget for 2021 uh, to 620-122. Uh, and that's a difference of about, uh, what, $22,000, $22,100, something like that. Uh, the biggest share of that, almost the entire increase in that is because we felt like the Lord led us in 2020, this year, to go ahead and take a step of faith to bring on Amelia Rowland uh, to a full-time position as our student, no, not our student, our Faith Kids Director, uh, full-time uh, here each and every day. For a good part of this year, uh, Amelia was doing two jobs, part-time here at our church and a, a job elsewhere, part-time, and we were able to relieve her of those responsibilities so that she could come on and be on full time with us. But it meant a, a pretty significant increase to um, to our budget, certainly going into 2021. For 2020, all of that surplus that was available to us gave us the strength and the confidence and the assurance that we can and should do this. So we have hired uh, Amelia. It's already a done deal. And we had all of the necessary resources that we needed to cover that increase um, this through the remainder of 2020. And we're even, we're even in good position to go into 2021 with that increase. But we are asking you to sort of get on board with us and build towards that vision of, um, of our staff team as it exists now, adding Amelia in as a full-time director. Um, we, during 2020, we said goodbye to Valerie, but only goodbye in the most positive of ways. We're excited for what's happening to Valerie uh, Campisi, her married name, formerly Valerie Carbaugh. Uh, we're so excited with what's happening in her life, and she's living up in Gettysburg with her husband, Matt. We've seen them. You, some of you have seen them, but in her departure, that too allowed us to reconsider a step of, of bringing Amelia on full-time. Amelia's jobs are primarily... Her, her primary job is in our faith kids as the director, and that's the, the most of her hours that are spent. However, she is also very gracious to help in the ad, admin, the administrative side of our front office with Christy, with Aaron, with all of us taking on some of Valerie's old responsibilities. So anyway, that's, that's kind of how that worked out. Um, most of our other expenses are consistent from last year. 2020 looks a lot like what 2021, we hope, looks. And we are asking you to give towards that. We don't anticipate a change in staff for a while. We feel like we've got a great staff and we're, we're glad for what's happened. Any excess that God provides in 2021, uh, as we grow, we pray, as we, we receive people into our church family that might be future givers to the mission of this church, um, the, the places that we expect is obviously to grow ministry, to look for new places where we can expand our ministry, and also to take some of those resources and care for our b building, our facility. Uh, it's getting, it's, it's not old, and it's, I just talked about the auditorium and what a beautiful space that is, and the renovation of our gathering room has already happened, and we've done some other things to improve the building, but it will always be something that we have to prioritize. Um, we have no debt on the building, which again is just, just amazing to me that we don't have that. And I'm so thankful for that. And that too came before I was ever here. So I take no credit for it, but we are debt free in terms of the ownership and the property and all of that kind of stuff. But like your homes, like, um, any, like our cars, like anything that we own, any possession that we have, uh, there's wear and tear and there's longevity or there's there's kind of sustaining maintenance that needs to happen. And so 
the finances of our church will go towards that. This year, some things that we were able to do because of your continued giving uh, that that exceeded um, our expenses, we were able to apply some things to some pretty large uh, expenditures in, in the building. One was um, a software control system that ran our HVAC. Not the, not the hardware of our HVAC, but our software. There's a software program that that helps us manage all of the, the different HVAC systems in our building. And it was very much out of date and it was an expensive repair or expensive upgrade. And so we were able to do that. And there is no leftover expense to that. It's amazing. Um, the, the care of the facility, the regular maintenance, we did some upgrades on our foyer, uh, some, some, some repairs that needed in there. Uh, Jason and Nikki Poole, if I can just give a shout out to Jason and Nikki who have sort of um, officially, unofficially kind of taken over the building. Um, and they, I, I see Jason and Nikki in here quite regularly with service men or service women who are doing some kind of project that is desperately needed done in our building. And so much thanks to those, to those two. And, uh, and, but our maintenance teams are, are, um, when we do our, um, what am I trying to say? Our our work days, our church-wide work days, a lot of you get involved in that kind of stuff, and we're really thankful. But all of these finances, we are in such good position financially. Uh, all of our global ministry partners are receiving their full support as we have designed for uh, 2021. Everybody, and, and, and they did in 2020. And so, uh, so much to be grateful for. But but our budget, we promise the the board has voted on that. That is an approved budget for 2021, uh, and and we're asking you now, as our church, to get behind that budget to give uh, regularly and faithfully to uh, to the ministries of this church. Uh, that pretty much brings an end. Um, I'm hoping that some of you are interacting with us online. Uh, I'm going to be watching this video as as it's played on Wednesday night. Uh, and I will be interacting on our YouTube channel uh, with any questions that are raised in the moment. But then, as we told you, you can also ask questions um, by Sunday in writing, some way to communicate to us uh, that you have a question about something that was presented, and we would love to respond to you very specifically with whatever that might be. So at this point, I'm going to bring a close. Uh, we're not doing the, the rules of meeting uh, and this is going to be a little bit different. So I just want to say much thanks to you. I'd actually love to just simply close us in prayer and ask that God would bless the work of our hands going forward in 2021. And want to thank you for watching and, and feeling hopefully informed about the, the status of the church, the state of the church as of 2020 and what we long for in 2021. So would you join me in prayer? Father God, thanks for a, a great uh, virtual meeting. Thank you for uh, the, the ability to do this, the technology that was required to make this happen, and that, that those who have watched either right on Wednesday night or maybe some that are going to watch at a, at a later date somewhere down the week, um, that, Lord, there would be an encouragement from all that is talked about uh, through it, that, that, that information was helpful and that, that inspirationally we feel excited about what you were doing. I, I, I even, Lord, I even sit here talking to nothing other than a camera and I'm excited. I'm excited for the people to see this. I'm excited for them to feel like uh, 2021 is going to just overwhelm us with your grace, your kindness, because we saw it so much in 2020, even if we thought we were faced with such difficulties that you came through for us. And so thank you for, for what this means. I pray for the budget. Uh, that it would be wisely carried forward. I pray for the men, Brian and Jeff, as they are being considered for re-election by the people of this church into uh, another three-year term on the board. Uh, I think of our ministries, Lord. I thank you for our staff. I thank you for uh, ministry leaders who are not staff but are volunteering their precious time to lead ministries in this church. Uh, Fathers in the Field with Matt Wilson or Young at Heart with uh, Ron and Clark, um, others like it, Lord, small group Bible studies and home groups and so much, Lord, that is happening that we should celebrate. And so thanks for this time. Thank you for the people of Faith Christian Fellowship, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and what it means to be a family together. Would you bless 
uh, again, the work of our hands only in the sense that we are bringing glory to you, uh, proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus, and we are being in fellowship with one another as you have commanded. So thanks for a, a great, I just thank you for this church, and I pray your blessings upon it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday, December 20th, and beyond, and enjoying the remainder of our Christmas season. God bless.